Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again with another G.I. Joe action figure review. In today's episode, we're taking a look at one of the uh, comic two packs from the 25th anniversary line. This is the Hardmaster versus Snake Eyes. A uh, very cool looking package here. Um, again, this came out the very beginning of the 25th anniversary releases. Very nice looking you know, typical window box packaging thing here. The two characters here. Some nice art here. And we get this awesome exclusive comic book written by Larry Hama himself. So that is very awesome. On the sides, we have uh, just the uh, character bio kind of thing. So, uh, Arashikagi leader for Hardmaster and Ninja Apprentice for Snake Eyes. So, this is a new version of Snake Eyes that is uh, not our traditional one. So it's one when he was uh, very young doing his apprenticeship with the Arashikagi clan. Did I say that right finally? Arashikagi. <laughs> I'm terrible at that. Uh, so this particular packaging is um, not the best in the world, as you can see here. Uh, just to point out here, there is some yellowing going on on the side here with the actual um, bubble here. Uh, so this is one thing you might want to be on the lookout for as you're uh, collecting and doing things like that. If these things sit in, they have sun, UV light hits them. Uh, this is very common to see. Just that plastic just yellows like that right there. It may not be picking up nearly as much as I thought it would be here on the uh, the camera, but you can tell um, by looking here at the side here, the uh, the yellow writing or the brown writing in there is actually supposed to be white, kind of like that. So, uh, yeah. But it doesn't look like it's going to affect the figures, but just kind of be on the lookout for that kind of thing if you're collecting packaged figures and things like that. Uh, flipping it over to the back here, we get just kind of a brief bio of G.I. Joe, what this particular story is about, um, the tiger and the teapot, <laughs> pretty cool, and then a couple of the other different sets that you can get, uh, number 11 and 12, with um, Beachhead and Mainframe, and Wild Bill and Scrap Iron. Though I keep forgetting they changed his name to uh, Data Frame, not Mainframe, so... <laughs> Uh, this was put out in 2008, and if you want to look at the bottom here, if you need uh, UPCs or anything like that, you can get a snap of that if you want. But, very cool looking package anyways. Uh, we're going to go ahead and tear into this thing and take a look at the figures, because that's what I care about. So, uh, these things have this weird tape on the sides of it, so we're just going to cut the tape off first. And at some point, I need to uh, sharpen this X-Acto knife. It's uh, starting to get a little dull on me. But it should still be fine for what we're doing today. All right. <clears throat> then once you have done that, these sides just kind of pop out. And you can either cut these things off or just kind of uh, pull at the bottom. Is usually what I do if I'm not trying to save the packaging. And just kind of pull the cardboard away from the edge there so once you do that the comic kind of flips out a little bit you can grab the blister pack here and remove it we do have the uh, file cards that are tucked under there and then the, uh, the actual comic itself so uh, past that it just looks like this nice stars there on the background but uh, nothing too exciting about that uh, let's take a look real quick and uh, flip through the comic here. This is issue 10, The Tiger and the Teapot. Nice little promo shot for some of the 25th anniversary figures and vehicles. Some pretty decent looking artwork. Maybe not the best in the world, but it's okay. We do get some really cool promo images here for vehicles and stuff, so... Uh, you'll have to pick up the comic to read it. I'm not going to read it here to you. But pretty nice to see uh, Snake Eyes training. Um, here is some cool Star Wars promos. <laughs> the Millennium Falcon there. 
more GI Joes. So yeah, very cool looking book. That's the last page there. So uh, cool comic. We'll put that to the side somewhere. Um, these things often don't come in the best shape. So um, if you're trying to get these on the secondary market, just be aware that very seldom do they come in uh, near mint condition. So like this one's got some corner dings on it, some uh, spine creases and a little waviness to it so you might could press some of that out but don't know if these things are actually worth anything by themselves i don't think so but anyways there's the comic uh figure packaging has a nice lift off little uh insert here um and you'll notice here that the uh the ink is actually faded on this, so that uh, UV damage is actually there and present, so be aware of that. That one's nice and clear, but uh, I'm going to toss that anyway, so no big deal. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the figures here. Uh, again, you can see this a little bit more pronounced here, The that UV damaged plastic there. Uh, we got some tape holding some of this stuff in, so let's go ahead and slice that off. And see what else has got taped down. This little arrow thing here is taped. And looks like Snake Eyes is fine. This uh, mask thing is taped down. The uh, figure stands are just uh, kind of packed in here in this cool little insert that just slides out of that tray. We'll go ahead and just get those out as well. So we got uh, Snake Eyes and the Hard Master. Awesome. And we have a bunch of accessories in this kit. So that is really cool. We've got a cool uh, sheath for this cool sword. Sheath, <laughs> cool sword. We've got a wooden practice sword. We have this awesome um, sword stand with some very cool looking things on the side of it. We'll uh, take a closer look here in a second, but uh, cool little stand for the swords. We have a second sword over here on the side for Hardmaster. In its sheath, we have the cool little face mask thing here for Hardmaster. We have a little bow here for Hardmaster. Nice white bow. He is uh, holding this cool arrow and we'll yank him out. Try to yank this guy out. There we go. There is Hard Master, very cool looking figure. The uh, white doesn't look like it's got any major sun damage, but uh, when we zoom in, we'll take a little bit closer look on that. Uh, then we've got Snake Eyes here and his uh, bow staff. And that's all the figures we got and accessories. And we can toss that very ugly looking tray way back there and sort these things out like that. <clears throat> so um, we'll pause it right now and zoom in and uh, take a closer look at these figures. So stick with us here. Now that we're zoomed in, we can take a closer look at all these cool things here and we're going to start with the uh, the actual file cards themselves they come in a nice taped little baggie here so let's un unseal this tape and pull the file cards out they do have this uh, nice black backing on them 
Uh, and we'll pause, you can pause it here to read through these if you want to, but here is uh, Snake Eyes and the Hardmaster. Very cool looking. Again, a uh, nice black background thing here, so very cool looking. Very nice. Then we also get the uh, the two figure stands. We'll start with uh, Snake Eyes one. Um, so this is a traditional 25th anniversary G.I. Joe stand here. Two foot pegs, the raised G.I. Joe logo on top, code name Snake Eyes, and then that 2007 copyright there. So standard stands, but uh, very awesome that they're included. And then we also have the same one for the Hard Master. G.I. Joe logo, two foot pegs, and 2007 copyright. So, very cool. Um, it gets a little confusing in the uh, the mythology for the G.I. Joe stuff where uh, the Arashikagi clan is usually associated with the Cobra. So, hence, you kind of think that they're all bad guys, but they were not bad guys. They just kind of ended up portrayed that way more than anything but uh anyways let's look at some accessories here let's start with this really cool looking stand some uh really awesome detail work here let me uh, move this light just a little bit here so we got some nice gold uh stamping going on there on the sides you can see these very cool whatever this thing is uh yeah, whatever that is. Uh, and that is not removable, but it's kind of, uh, well, I guess it is actually removable. So it just kind of pops out. You've got this little uh, tray thing right there. This just can pop back inside there if you want to. It's uh, made out of a very soft plastic, though. And on this side, we got some cool wax candles. And they will pop out, too, same way. Um, but it's got a tier system here so you've got uh, really three tiers uh, very traditional kind of Japanese sword stand here you can take the swords and lay them in here like so and like so and then the third one would have gone like at the very top here like so so very nice it's a very cool looking thing here I I'm actually surprised this was in here I kind of forgot about it from the first time I had one of these, but uh, very nice though. Cool. So there's the the figure stand, uh, sword stand. Uh, as we said before, we've got this nice wooden practice sword here. We don't see these very often pop up in the GI Joe line, and it's a nice wooden color with a little bit of white highlight there on the uh, the guard. Beyond that, looks like a pretty regular sword. Uh, the light here may be blowing that out a little bit but very nice about the same size as a traditional sword here toss that over here then we have the uh regular katana here some really nice details here in the hilt very nice blade it's got a little bit of uh paint wear right there but uh Beyond that, nice silver. We also get this very cool sheath for the sword. The Arashikagi clan symbol there on the side. Some white wrapping. Little peg there for it to go on somebody's back or their side. And this will just kind of slide in here like this. And there's a little bit of a... Uh, so on the, uh, I don't know what you call that part, but the little above the guard there, that little black piece there, is just a little bit bigger than the actual blade. So that actually acts as a little catch there. So when you actually press that all the way in, it catches and it won't slide out. So that's very nice. Very cool looking. I'll toss that over there. Um, so I guess that brings us to Hardmaster first. Uh, since we just saw the black sword, here is also the white sword. It's the, the same mm, basic model, except it actually has a physical string attached to it, which is interesting there. 
but the blade itself here is the white and silver so this is basically like the you know snake eye sword and the storm Sh storm shadow sword is kind of what that's meant to be there but uh fits in there nice and snug as well it is very interesting though that it does have that white string tied around it there so that is very cool i don't know exactly why they did it that way but yeah interesting anyways and then we get this uh cool looking um mask i'm gonna try to dim this main light just so we can get some details to show up here maybe it's got some nice kind of silver highlights on the actual eyelets and pretty nice design nice strap that goes all the way around and then in theory this uh just slips on i guess the bandana probably slips off his head doesn't actually look like that's the case <laughs> um so that's weird Let me try this one more time here. Oh, that's glued on there. Well, it was glued. Uh, so if you uh, unglue it, that slips off like so, <laughs> which is not supposed to. Uh, but then the face mask will fit on there. No, it still doesn't. Not very well, anyhow, so, uh, but that's kind of what it would look like if it did fit a little bit better, but, uh, yeah, that, uh, headband is actually supposed to stay glued on there, so, um, you don't really, uh, want to be removing it, <laughs> unlike me, which, uh, I just did, so, <laughs> we'll come back to him in just a second, <laughs> moving on to the, uh, the, the actual bow that we've got here, it's a nice white bow, it does have uh, quite a bit of detail in it. Probably can't get this to focus too well. Turn the light up just a little bit. There we go. You can see some interesting detail in this thing. It's uh, not one of the traditional bows we've seen in the past. Uh, it's very similar to it, but this intricate kind of scroll work is unique, it looks like. At least I don't remember seeing this bow before, so uh, that is cool. So there's the bow. Uh, he's also got this cool little arrow in his hand here that is supposed to go with the bow. Just kind of set it to the side. You can kind of pull the thing back a little bit, but uh, yeah, not a whole lot there. So. Anyways, uh, the actual arrow itself is nice silver color. Not a lot of detail work on it, but it works for what it is, so there you go. Uh, moving on to the figure itself, let's uh, jack the light back up here and take a look here and see what we got here. Uh, so, uh, there's a lot of cool things going on here. Uh, the sculpt looks like it's basically the same as... Um, what is that right there? Weird plastic glue from his broken headband. <laughs> um, same basic sculpt as the, uh, the Spy Master Snake Eyes figure. I don't remember his actual full name there, but uh, the Commando version of uh, Snake Eyes with the cool spy gear. Um, <laughs> but in a nice red color here. On his uh, sides here, he's got a bunch of shrieking. Got some cool daggers on his front, some more throwing stars, and this cool scroll thing on the side that I've not seen before either, so that's a nice little touch there. He does have his cool little bandana around his head. Let me uh, pull this light down just a little bit. Uh, that you saw earlier, I pulled off by yanking the glue off of it but uh, in theory you're not supposed to do that so it's kind of sculpted and glued on there uh, beyond that he's got a pretty decent looking face a uh, little bit of paint thing right there i can probably 
knock that off with my thumb now. But, uh, yeah, interesting little head wrap there anyways. Again, nice detail work in the actual clothing. Very cool. It really reminds me a lot of Lifeline as well, for whatever reason. But it's a very nice looking figure. Articulation wise, the head does spin 360 degrees. And if you can keep his uh, headband off <laughs> that I broke, <laughs> that's my fault. Put that back on there. All right. 360 degrees. He does have some up and down. So good articulation there. Very nice with that. Uh, standard ball and swivel at the shoulder joints. Standard ball and swivel here at the elbow joints. And then he's got just a standard swivel here at the, uh, the wrist. Or the top of the wrist, I should say. Standard rib cage articulation lots of ab crunch feature standard metal t hooks at the waist and hips full front motion full back motion he does have the double knee joints and a swivel and a rocker there on the ankle so very nice articulation there um, the figure itself looks really nice i'm actually pretty impressed with this Again, not so sure how well it uh, translates to the Hard Master himself, but uh, it works pretty well. So, yeah, no real big complaints there. It's a very interesting figure anyways. It's a nice addition. I like the scroll thingy. Beyond that, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool here. So, uh, the little knives here are non-removable. They are glued in as well, and... I'm not going to break that glue like I have the rest of that. So, uh, cool figure anyways. We'll move on to the uh, Snake Eyes Ninja Apprentice. He comes with this cool bow staff. Nice brown color. Regular white wrapping there. Pretty nice. Pretty plain. It's a little bent. Made out of that kind of semi-soft plastic. So you could heat it up to get it to uh, go back to whatever shape you want it to. But that's kind of the way it comes. And then we have the actual Snake Eyes figure himself here. So let us take a look at this and see. Um, this light's really being weird tonight. Let me pull that down. So we do have a pretty cool looking head sculpt. It's uh, kind of that traditional ninja face mask. Uh, very nice outfit here. Pretty much the standard ninja outfit. Um, so yeah, nothing too spectacular to report about that. Uh, I do like the way his gi ties are, and I like the feet. Some really nice detail down here with his little booted feet here and, uh, the little sandals that go between the toes there. Um, beyond that, it's just kind of a regular Red Ninja figure painted in gray, so... I like that particular figure style anyway, so this is a very nice addition. And yeah, I mean, not a whole lot more to say about the actual figure itself. Uh, articulation wise though, the head spins 360 degrees. We've got some up and down motion, a little bit of side to side there. Standard ball and swivel at the shoulder joints. Standard ball and swivel at the elbow joints. We've got a standard swivel at the mid arm. We do have the standard uh, chest rib cage twist. Lots of ab crunch there, so very nice. Standard metal T hooks there at the waist and hips. Full front motion, 
mostly full backward motion, completely full side to side there. He does have a double knee joint. He does have the swivel and the rocker there at the ankle. So all in all, very nice articulation here. Uh, pretty standard for most of these G.I. Joes here. So, yeah, I mean, nothing really special, but uh, nothing to complain about either here. Um, so, yeah, it's it's an interesting take on the uh, the Snake Eyes mythos. It's nice to get a figure from uh, when he was first training and first starting out, so... Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, the staff itself fits loosely in his hands, but it does <laughs> mostly fit. So you can get uh, some halfway decent action poses with it. Not bad at all. No big complaints there. Um, you can also take the cool sword and uh, stick it, peg it into his back there if you wanted to. Uh, he doesn't have a side holster or anything like that, so can't do much with it that way, but still, you can get some decent stuff going on here. Um, so as a set, what am I thinking here? Um, it's definitely not a have to have kind of figure set. Um, what it does, it does well. And, uh, I don't really have any complaints about it, but really it's, uh, not kind of main canon kind of stuff. So I guess it's easy to kind of overlook it as a set, but um, the Snake Eyes figure is a good figure. Um, it would be nice, I guess, to use as another ninja figure for the G.I. Joe Wars, if you're looking at it that way. Uh, Hard Master, it's a cool figure. Um, not really sure how well it fits in with uh, some of the other, you know, Ninja War stuff here, but um, all in all, it's definitely not a bad set. Um, I think... I really like the sword stands, the fact that you get the uh, the black and the white version of the two Arashikage clan swords is very interesting. Beyond that, it's cool to have a wooden sword for practice stuff, and the bow staff is pretty interesting as well. Uh, the bow and arrow is kind of a, mm, not really interesting, <laughs> and then this mask is just weird because it doesn't really fit on the figure itself. So I wonder if it fits on Snake Eyes. I don't think it will because you got this weird uh, juddy out thing there. So no, it doesn't. <laughs> so I guess you can just carry the mask around with you, something like that. But uh, I don't know. These things are uh, fairly cheap. Fairly easy to come by as well, so it's definitely worth thinking about picking it up, but not necessarily uh, you have to go track it down unless you're a completist kind of thing. So, yeah, take it with a grain of salt, though. Well, that's all the time we have for today, so thanks for watching. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down if you don't really dig it, whatever. Uh, but drop some comments down below. Let me know what you think of this particular set, uh, the Hard Master and the Ninja Apprentice Snake Eyes. If there's anything you'd like to see in future episodes, let me know that as well. I'll see what I can do to get it out in front of y'all. And until next time, yo Joe.